Hello there guys, I'm here from TechDay.com and we're going to be making another major benchmark slash review of Windows 8 versus Ubuntu 13.04 versus Linux Mint 14.1. Um, this is not really due to popular demand, it's just because uh, our previous article um, with Ubuntu 13. Point, uh, no 12.04 um, versus Windows Windows 8 got a lot of uh, gained a lot of uh, attention over the internet, and no one really uh, requested any any ex uh, specific operating system battle. We're just doing this right now because uh, we're, we we kind of we th thought it was pretty obvious that you guys liked the pre previous article. But please, next time, um, you know, just say whatever you want to be reviewed or whatever you want to be compared, and we'll do it. We just want you to. Um, we want to kind of do what you want, so just please, uh, if you have anything in mind, um, maybe a different version of Linux Mint, uh, different versions of, I don't know, maybe add Mac into it, but uh, just uh, please, next time, uh, give us, uh, in the comments, tell us what you want next um, on our blog or on one of our videos. So, th in this video, I'm going to be going, kind of doing an overview of one, each of the three operating systems. And as for um, installation time and benchmark time, um, I'm just going to be uh, showing, uh, Not I'm not going to be obviously recording the uh, uh, installation time and all the benchmark cause the benchmarks because that would take hours and it would take a, a really long time for me to render and it wouldn't look that professional. So I'm just going to give you the information straight up. I'm going to show you an uh, overview of on the same computer, uh, Toshiba i7 SSD a laptop. And right here, I have on the same type disk, so we're going to have the same speed, Windows 8, uh, Evaluation, um, Ubuntu, 13.4, uh, and Linux Mint right here. So we're going to have all these three operating systems. I'm going to start off with uh, Windows 8. I'm going to move, move my way towards uh, Linux Mint. And finally, I'm going to end off with Ubuntu, which I hope I'm going to stick with um, if it's good enough. And that will replace Windows for the first time with me. So um, let's let's start. Alright, so I'm booting off from Windows 8. I'm a, uh, I'm basically documenting uh, just the ease of the installation, um, but I'm not going to be showing you how it's uh, how long it actually takes to copy the files and install and all that, because that's unnecessary. I'm just going to be giving you that information straight up. Just focusing in on that. All right, perfect. Taking quite a bit here. Um, pretty sure it's loading some information. Just want to note, it looks pretty uh, user friendly from now. There's not um, so much intimidating, you know, like old that old Windows 2000 code you get when you're installing uh, old operating Windows operating systems. Looks pretty simple, you know. It's telling you it's loading some information. So right now, as you can see, it loaded. Setup, and it's pretty much a basic Windows 7 installation type, and it's setup starting. I've tried uh, Ubuntu and. All, I've tried all these three operating systems before, just to know. A long time ago. So it's pretty, um, you know, it tells you, explains what, if you go with which option and what you're going to get out of each option. I can go to advanced uh, format. So shouldn't take that long. Okay, and we are formatting our current hard drive.
Hey there guys, I'm back here and uh, with Windows 8, everything's set up, it's working perfectly and I'm on the login screen right now. Um, Windows 8 looks really elegant, I have to say. It's probably really good for the average consumer, low cost um, compared to uh, some alternatives like um, OS X. Um, just the OS X upgrades are actually pretty cheap, I think around 30 per disk, I'm not sure, don't take my word on that. But their uh, devices are actually really expensive on uh, Macs. They're really expensive, but this one, um, Windows 8, really nice, elegant, looks, uh, it's really synced up. Like, for example, when I'm logging in, they have unnecessary necessary stuff, like, why should I have to do this? I think that's a tablet thing, so it's not only, um, it's not really, uh, meant, it's not really fully meant to be a desktop computer. I've tried it on a tablet, I've tried it on, actually on an HP laptop, um, with a touch screen, uh, with the touch screen and it and it worked really nice and I think that's where Microsoft was headed with this so you, if you really want to try Windows 8 you can't just evaluate um, use the evaluation version on your own computer you really do have to go and try it out at the store or just you know like that because it really is a different experience now um, as I said it looks real elegant really nice graphics I like the theme to it um, it really gives it that tablet feel even though if you're on your computer and it really helps you get stuff done um, it can help you focus on one current application because uh, it's it's hard to switch switch um, between applications personally. Um, cause, I mean, you could just go to the corner, switch back. However, you can't really see like four applications at once on the screen. It's not it's not as uh, I want to say versatile as Windows 7 or any previous version of Windows or any of the other two operating systems that I'm going to test. So as you can see, to log in, got to go like that. We're logged in, you know, everything. It looks per very personalized. I can uh, switch around between these. I can remove this, unpin it. Uh, you know, it looks real nice. And, it, and these tiles are like windows. Uh, it gives a metro look. So the news are updating. Everything's trending. You know, uh, all my emails over there. And it gives you weather. Allow to use my location. And it looks real nice, like... This is really advanced. Um, uh, I mean, it, it's kind of like a tablet. You get that tablet. Um, for an average person, I think this is a really good operating system because you're not gonna, you know, use. You're not gonna use it. It's gonna give the average uh, user a really. It's gonna be much simpler to use. However, there is, I think, a bit of a learning curve because people who have used the previous versions of Windows are gonna have a diff maybe a difficult time at least in my opinion I'm um, kinda adapting to this and as you can see we have the stocks right here everything looks real nice I like the colors um, as you can see photos look real nice uh, everything looks real sharp text cuz uh, um, the themes are well thought out you know colors are dark and the backgrounds light so um, they knew really they knew good how to you know make this uh, really efficient version of Windows and I want I want to note something um, my screen didn't look that great on any other operating system when I put when I installed Windows 8 it looked amazing I didn't even believe that this was my own laptop it looked so clean crisp and clear so as, as I said um, that's pretty much it for Windows um, Windows 8 other than you, you have now have a uh, app store kind of if you will so many of the apps are free. You can there's tons of apps, and obviously it's Windows, so it's growing every day. And uh, the big names are already on here, so you're good. And um, as I said, it's a big competitor to the market. Windows' market share, you know, is going. Is Windows 8's market share is growing, and um, their stocks increasing. I think are arguably because of Windows 8. So it's a real good operating system. However, I'm gonna leave the decision to you. I just told you if you're that average user that doesn't want to do much, that that expects to get most of their apps from their store itself, then I think Windows um, 8 might be a good option for you. However, um, I'm going to go over the benchmarks right now. Hey there guys, so I'm about to go over the benchmarks I came up. Um, I uh, took It took me a long time to make these benchmarks. Uh, I hope you benefit from them. So for the boot time, we tested and uh, it came up with 24.9 seconds, which is not bad compared to previous versions of Windows. Install time was about 20 minutes. 
graphics, um, we got a we give it a 1.5 based on several tests, um, based on a test, and uh, uh, the higher score is better, so that's not like seconds or anything. Shutdown, um, 9.8 seconds. Hard drive read, 121.1 megabytes per second. Uh, remember that I do have an SSD in this laptop, and then for our write, we could not able, we weren't able to do the test. And I will, and I didn't want to get like third-party software or anything, so I then which would force me to like give you inaccurate results. So I, I'm I'm gonna exclude the write for Windows. Um, hard drive access time I did not write that here. However, for the access time we got point three three two nine uh, milliseconds, which is real fast. Um, I think this was faster than our previous test, maybe because. Uh, uh, this version of, you know, Windows um, wasn't the beta, so I don't know, maybe it fixed up there. But I want to say this this version of Windows is blazing fast, and um, the 100 megabyte uh, file online speed test, uh, which we downloaded and tested, w was 17.6 megabits per second. Um, and then for our uh, deleting a 100 megabyte file in uh, from the recycling bin, so you know, permanently deleting it, we came up with 0.8 seconds. Not bad. Uh, Windows was actually really fast. Um, the decision is up to you. It's time to go on to Linux Mint and finally uh, Ubuntu. Hey there, guys. Um, I'm in Linux Mint right now. As you can see, it's kind of like a typical uh, old Ubuntu installation. I haven't seen a new Ubuntu installation if it's any different. But, uh, as you can see, it shows the CD plugged in, and you can install right off the CD, or you can just continue to use the operating system. I'm going to go ahead and install it, so we can go ahead with the benchmarks as normal. Okay, just focusing in, focused. Alright, so that's that. And installation is probably going to be a little bit, um, probably similar to... I want to say it's going to be easy, obviously, again. All installations are pretty easy. However, I think this is going to be less graphical. Um, it's going to be, it has a less, uh, it's going to, the installation's not going to look as good as Windows 8, as Windows, because uh, Windows, um, that was a really nice installation, how it looked, the flow and all that. So just making sure. All right, I think it's loading now. And as you can see, this is the Linux Mint. You have a menu like the old Ubuntu. I actually like this a lot. The uh, Genome or uh, GTK. My bad. I think this is <laughs> Genome. No, it's not Genome. Yeah, comes with a lot of stuff. Yeah. It looks pretty decent, actually. Okay, that's that's pretty simple. Comes with a lot of languages. Okay, each language is spelled in its own language. Pretty nice. Pretty smart. Okay, we can connect it to the internet. Oh, so the drivers come preloaded just like Ubuntu and Windows, so everything's really nice on all these three operating systems. Um, I really respect that uh, they put through all this work, and it is actually pretty easy. However, it's less graphical, as I said. I think that pretty much the rest of the installation is straightforward, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just uh, go on with that. And as, it, as w Windows did, replace Windows 8. Um, with Linux Mint, it, just, it, it, it even tells you what operating system you have. Pretty, pretty neat. It tells me my drive, install new, and pretty much now it's only the wait time. So I'm gonna go ahead and time it starting right now, and okay, and I'll resume. Hello there, guys. I'm back here with the actual Linux Mint, and as you can see, I've already done the benchmarks. However, I want to do the overview before going over the benchmark results. I originally expected Linux Mint to be like a crappy operating system because of previous versions of Linux Mint, but uh, this one has uh, GD GTK uh, 3 and uh, I think it's a Cinnamon. 
Um, but I was really surprised of all the improvements they put in. They are putting a lot of hard work into this. It actually feels like old, older versions of Ubuntu, which I really like. It's really fast, but um, it does have a couple of problems I immediately noticed. So first off, in the latest installation, it crashed before it finished, right before it finished. Pretty quick installation time, almost the same as in Windows 8. But uh, it crashed, but it still surprisingly worked great. Everything's running, uh, all the packages are here, nothing missing. I don't know why it crashed, maybe it was just some fault in the end. Anyway, so, uh, real good fast operating system. Um, uh, just there's a few problems, and it's real, real simple to use. If you like old, like old versions of things, like... Uh, like uh, V Bulletin instead of the new one, you like this is the old one, or like Windows, you like the old versions of Windows, like 2000 or not 2000. Well, you don't like the new updated stuff that just seems to go with the average consumer. You want to go with the um, functionality of things. This is a real good, um, very good operating system. It has its own software manager, very secure, as you can see. So 63,161 packages. Um, probably if I update it, it will probably even increase. But really good organization. As you can see, even this beats Windows 8 when it comes to um, their store. Obviously, Windows still has more, way more applications than this or any other operating system out there um, if you're not uh, including the store. And, you, and if you go to, I think... I go to Linux Mint and forward slash software. I think, yeah, you can automatically f search. There's kind of like software store online, and then you click a button, and bam, it op opens it in the in their um in their manager. So it's real, real nice. And uh, as you can see, software portal. Oh, it's community down next mint forward slash software. So these are the top packages. VLC is the most uh, uh, popular, as you can see. Reviews, they have reviews. Um, it's a real nice uh, kind of like a conservative operating system. Real nice, real fast. Um, and I'll go over the benchmarks right now. All right, so these are the results of the several tests. Boot time. 31.36, slightly higher than Windows 8. Install time, 19 minutes. It crashed early. However, it still works. I'll give it um, 19 minutes. Uh, graphics, 1.6, slightly better than... Um, in, speed, in terms of speed, slightly better than Windows 8. However, in terms of compatibility... Um, uh, these tests are very minor. Um, the graphics test um, could be off a bit. So, I don't know, I, I would say I want to edit it and give, uh, it was real, real slim. So, I'm going to give it uh, very similar um, to Windows. Um, shut down 9.3 seconds. Read 210.82 megabytes per second. Way higher than Windows is 121.1 megabytes per second. <laughs> Could be almost double. Um, anyways, access time to the hard drive was 0.2 milliseconds compared to Windows 0.329 milliseconds. And then we have the 100 megabyte file download rate from online, 8.1 megabits per second compared to Windows, which was um, more than double. So these tests uh, show that um, many things can fluctuate between these two operating systems. Um, these tests, yeah, real, we, it took me... An hour for these tests um, to install all the uh, packages that I need to, to conduct these tests and make it uh, fair and square. But that's that. Time to go to the um, next operating system. Last but not least, Ubuntu 13.4. Let's go. Hey there, guys. I'm back with the final operating system, which is Ubuntu 13.04, and we're going to be installing it. It's kind of more like a guided, guided process. Um, like similar to Windows 8, uh, uh, Linux Mint installation process, process was kind of open. You could uh, directly um, from the startup, you could uh, actually just plug putting in your CD. You could uh, get that try um, live CD. 
Um, for, but for here, it tells you if you want to try install, and you go on to install, and it kind of takes you more guided through the installation process or whatever. And it's kind of slower. I don't know why. So we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to um, do that because I, I want to uh, get it as close as possible to Windows 8 and Linux Mint installation. I think I install the other one with Codex, and I'm gonna install this one with Codex as well. So we continue. Uh, not con really similar to Linux Mint actually. Uh, also, um, it says it's not connected to the internet. Gives you dial download updates. I'm not gonna do that. I didn't do that with Linux Mint, and it's kind of slow, slower than Linux Mint. So, once again, my 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 uh, my internet should be right here because the gain's highest uh, since I'm closer to it. But they made that mistake and display the open connection. I don't know why, which they shouldn't have done. Same as Linux Mint. I'm gonna continue after I get connected. Alright, let's go. I haven't tried Ubuntu in a long time. One feature I like with it is that if you're on a laptop and if you're typing, it it will automatically disable the mouse pad. You can set it up like that, and I can uh, I'm gonna replace it just like all the time. Install now. I have to restart because last time when I made the video, this wouldn't show up. To wait now. So, where am I? Chicago. I already know. Hey there, guys. I'm back with the final overview. And Ubuntu um kind of gave me a hard time during the installation a bit. Um, maybe that's just for me because my uh, computer or something. I don't know. However, it's working perfectly right now. I like. I actually the way it looks. Um, is is amazing, but I don't think it's very functional. Now that I've tried Windows 8 and I've tried um, Ubuntu, um, I think they're pretty close, and I think I, I could actually be a bit more focused on uh, Windows 8. I like where they're going. Um, I actually liked Ubuntu for a long time. I think, however, I'm going to end up going with Ubuntu um, for um, speed of multitasking, all that. It's much more functional. Um, I can view 20 windows at once. However, Windows 8 is kind of like you're doing one thing, you're focused at that. But that's not me. I'm always doing stuff between two programs, copying data, ed editing an image, uploading it online, GIMP, my blog, all that. Um, Eclipse, um, you know, ID, I'm in my ID, I'm programming, I'm going to look, some, look something up on the internet, uh, some, you know, method I could use or whatever um, in the doc. So um, I'm doing all these things, switching between that and that. Um, I think this would be a better alternative than Windows, um, a little faster. And uh, I'm just gonna uh, show you how it works. So this is a, uh, this is like the portal right here, if you will. Um, it's like the start menu. You could search, blah blah blah. Um, it comes with Amazon. You can delete that. Like if I want to search, I want to buy a. It will tell me how much that costs. Um, on Amazon, it's in search of the internet. Yeah, like one point, um, one th that it will tell me the cost and all that. It also comes with LibreOffice, just like the uh, um, just like Linux Mint, really similar to Linux Mint. I'm actually liking Linux Mint's design right now. It's uh, much more, um, you know, uh, it's kind of like a typical operating system. It's not not that next leap forward. Um, Ubuntu has had Unity for um quite a while now. I do. Really like it. I especially especially like just like Windows. I like the um, this screen right here. Looks real elegant. Yeah, I just type my password in. It's real secure. Um, Linux and real fast as well. Wrong password. Probably wrong again. Um, nevertheless, for the as for the benchmarks. I am going to say them um, out loud. So, um, for the boot, 27.7 seconds. As for installation, 13 minutes. I think they probably cached a lot of stuff um, prior to starting the installation. That's what gave them an advantage. And I think also Windows caches the stuff before you actually log in. So th those are for its both advantage. Um, for for Windows advantage is the pre, um, for the login uh, boot time and for Ubuntu it would be uh, s 
um, it would be the installation um, time. And uh, for graphics, they gave it a 1.9 because of rendering speeds and all that. Um, came pre-installed with the drivers and all that. So, pretty good. Shutdown time, surprising. Um, 5.4, real quick, 5.4 seconds. Um, read speed, 277.1 megabytes per second. Access time is 0.17 milliseconds. 0.17 milliseconds. And then finally, um, I think I'm going to avoid the uh, internet download test because of the uh, various browsers. So I'm just going to stay with the test that I mentioned and um, compare them. The final results are going to be on the website, um, techdiggy.com. Check us out. We're going to have a big overview. Uh, I'm going to try to put in some images, gather some images from the internet, put them on the blog. Uh, so you can have a big uh, view of what you want and what you're going to get um, with each one of these operating systems and which one um, excels in uh, it, in the points I'm going to cover, such as security, software, um, speed, etc. So that's that. Um, once again, I, I don't know what I'm going to go with right now because I'm obviously going to have to reinstall an operating system on this computer, you know, whatever it is. Um, nevertheless, you know, I'm going to have to reinstall. I just want to make a point. Windows 8, for a person who wants to do one thing at once, like they go on the computer probably to type a paper for school, stuff like that, that's type of for you. Um, maybe if you want to kind of focus, you're the person who focuses on one thing at once, you kind of want something swift for what you're doing, um, nice graphics. Uh, Ubuntu, uh, kind of like a Windows 7, uh, I want really similar to it, but uh, you know, a lot of you multitask really easily, you can view multiple screens. Um, uh, I think four screens right now, uh, also, um, and really, uh, they have a own marketplace, um, a lot of packages, a lot of apps in the marketplace, and they're, uh, in their Ubuntu Software Center already, my bad, it's called Ubuntu Software Center, and then, um, Linux Mint for the guy who kind of is more advanced, um, who, who's willing to go the additional step not know what's gonna hit him, but he's gonna have a fun path. You know, he's gonna he likes to play around with the operating system and stuff like that. It's kind of manipulated, manipulated to do what he wants. The person who likes to dig, dig inside the operating system, edit stuff, add stuff like that. So that's Linux Mint. So um, just I'm not gonna tell anyone which one I suggest. I just want you to make the best decision for yourself. Once again, techdiggy.com. Um, please tell us what you want us to review. Cause if you don't, we're just gonna end up reviewing whatever we think is best for you but it would obviously be better if you tell us what to review so just shoot us a comment on the Tech Diggy blog or um, preferably because I don't check the YouTube that often only when I'm making videos and uh, uh, probably gonna link the probably gonna make a good blog post about this as well so thank you and